Good morning, everyone. We're continuing in our quest for knowledge and inspiration to serve the God of Israel, the creator of the universe. <clears throat> and to um, to realize that the, tr the true value, what this means, that we, we've, got, we've got a creator and he loves us, he's creating us, and to appreciate reality, to appreciate life, to appreciate who we are. Uh, and that God has infinite, infinite faith in us, infinite faith in us. In fact, the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe wanted that in all the schools in America, even the non religious schools, that they would say this prayer, this first prayer in the morning that religious Jews say as soon as they wake up in the morning. Translated into, into English, of course. And the prayer essentially says, I'm grateful to you, uh, the living God, that you gave me back my soul. Your faith in me is great. In other words, everybody is here for a reason. The problem is we have to sort of think a little more positive terms. And that's what the Rebbe is trying to get us to do here, to appreciate God. So he says, well, we got the angels. The angels, they don't have any problem appreciating God. They have no distractions. They have no uh, the children to take care of or next door neighbors or debts or terrible presidents or uh, the newspapers and false news and media. And things. They don't have any of those problems. They don't have any problems. <clears throat> Taxes and, 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 and diseases. And the, the problems with with the what's more with the shots and the epidemics. The angels don't have these problems. What do they have to do all day? They got no television. What do they do? Angels it says that angels are, are occupied in reality, just like we're occupied in most most almost hundred percent, maybe hundred percent really in just imagination, right? Here you got television, radio. All they do is just present you with these imaginary scenarios that you either hear or you. And that's real by us. That's like by us, really. really oh, he said this. This I saw a picture. Of that's by us. Is that that's the reality we live in? Well, that's a false reality. Just as we're interested in in those false things, as you know, once in a while I imagine that these news could be true. I think they, they they probably are so used to not saying it that they don't <clears throat> that they ignore it. But the fact is, is that once in a while. Uh, that, that some, there's some value in what <coughs> it says, the television, the news, and the movies, and this. But most of it is just totally imagination. And we get excited about it. It says the Rebbe, why not to get excited about reality? Get excited about reality, right? Reality is, you can see, like, uh, true friends, friendship, love, a, a mother and her son, a father and a son, a mother, a child and a mother, child and his father, Right, brotherly love, brother's truth. That that's already true love. It doesn't even depend on time or place. It's just a little example. Honesty. You know, people want to honesty. You know, these things are, are are eternal values. Well, that's just an example of even more the, 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 of the source of all these eternal values, and that's God. So it says the Rebbe, when a person starts to feel the reality of God, you start to feel the reality that you are really being created by God. As you start to feel, then you get excited. Why? How do you know you get excited? So it's because that's what the angels do. That's what the angels are doing. The angels have true values. The angels have true values. It's like somebody coming and telling you, you know, well, you just got a, you want a million dollars in the bank, right? And it's a lie, but you get excited, right? But if you really have the million dollars in the bank, then you get excited also. But then you think, well, what do I do with this money? You know, what am I uh, going to help other people or what? What's the purpose of it? Same thing, the angels, they feel the creator. They feel the creator of all purpose. Okay, so it says the same thing we can do also. This is even a commandment to the Jewish people to love God with all of your heart. What does it mean to love God with all of your heart? It says also, and, and let's take the Jews first. Like we said before, I have to repeat this all over and over again because it's, it's very important. And I have to repeat it to myself also to tell me it's myself to convince myself it's very important. The Jewish people have been chosen to improve the whole world, to teach all mankind what God is and how much God loves them. 
that God is creating them. But first of all, we have to show that, that God is very, 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 very real and very, very, very good. And when we feel that something is real and it's good and it's ours, then you have what we call in, he, in the in English language, love. Love. You, if you feel a value for something, people love their mothers, they love their fathers, they love they have some good quality that they have, that they love. They love this music, they love this, because it's good, they feel how good it is. The same thing to feel how good God is, okay. Says the Rebbe, that's, that's inherent in every Jew. Every human being, some people have a sense of music, some people have a sense of taste, right? They can taste good food, wine, certain people can taste wine. <clears throat> some people have a sense of art, some people have a sense of of music and sports and this. Every Jew has a sense of God, appreciates God. It says also there's what's called, that's, and that, that sense of God, that's called the godly soul. It's another soul. It's a whole different identity. It's called the Jewish identity. That's called the godly soul. Inside of this, there is the godly soul is made up of what we call four elements. And the element of fire, that's going to be this love that we're talking about. Okay, the four elements. Spiritual, as understood. <clears throat> Where is the water of the godly soul? This is in the brain. Where is the fire? This is in the heart. In order to... Mix, let's see if I can make this a little bigger here. Huh? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <clears throat> the whole idea of harmonizing between these four elements and our soul. In the first chapter of the Tanya, it talks about it. Talks about it. But there it talks about the, the, the four elements and the natural soul. It's, it's not equal in every person. There's some people who are more emotional, there's some people who are more intellectual. <clears throat> there's some people that the, the element of water, love, Hubi's gabra. Some people have there's love like water. Also, there's some people that have more. They're fiery, more fiery. Some people are more water. They, they like to do to others. They like to. But who pleasure? It says is pleasure comes from water. Fire is is like the the emotional excitement. But who kamol For instance, like a coal. Sheish gechalim. There's sometimes coals that the fire burns in them in a revealed way. And sometimes there's a coal, which is just this, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, glowing. And sometimes there's just something that there's just smoldering. It's just has a little sort of fire inside of it. Ah, but that's the same thing with the godly soul of the Jew. Ah, but in calls that nevertheless, cave and sense. The, the, this, uh, like a, a coal, has a little spark of fire in it, Therefore, if you blow, you know, like a, the, 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 what is it? The, in the, the iron smith, right? The iron smith. So he makes the iron hot, red hot, and then he blows on the fire, right? The fire to make the fire even hotter. So you can make it, a, it's the same thing. Then it starts to flame up in a revealed way. Kamokin similarly, Ugamkin, and also in the godly soul of a person, it has a fire, Shabalibo, in his heart. And it gets stronger and stronger, and just like in, in, a re, in a revealed way, like we said, by the coals that are just smoldering when you blow on them. <clears throat> Then it the fire comes out in a revealed way. Right? You ever do a barbecue? Sometimes they have the coals, you have the charcoals, you bring a fan, but sometimes the fire, godly fire in their heart is concealed. And this is like a like just glowing flames, smoldering, smoldering uh, 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 coals. There's just one little spark inside of them and it's concealed. But this little spark is, is found in every single Jew. So, okay, what's the Rebbe trying to say? Every single Jew has a sense of the value of God. Right? Like I said before, there are some people that have their have a tremendous business sense. 
There's some people that have musical sense. There's some people that have speaking. They can speak, stand in front of a crowd. Some people have art. Other people, they, they have interpersonal relations. They, they know how to deal with other people. They have a sense how to work with children. Some people are, it's just a sense that they have. Some people are good in sports. Oh, that's a multi-trillion dollar business. That's a, 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 it's got a sense right, of how to be a good boxer, how to be a good, whatever it is, a basketball player. It's just, he's, he's got that thing, right? That he really appreciates it and really gets it. It says every Jew, every Jew has a sense of the value of God. And God is the most valuable thing that there can possibly be. But the angels know it. The angels feel it. And when we read about the angels, that's in the prayers. And look in a Jewish prayer book right before they say the Shema. And it talks about how the angels are burning up to God. Why? To tell you that there's what to burn up about. The, the, the God is exciting. God is precious. God is valuable. A person that feels God and how close God and it belongs to me, he, he's got love, right? Like somebody comes up to a poor person in the street and gives them a million dollars, right? You take the million dollars and here I got a few people to advise you how to use this million dollars. The same thing, every Jew has inside of him the spark of godliness that's worth more than millions of dollars and the Torah is the advisors that tell us how to use it. Every single Jew has this spark of love of God, that's this flame inside of him. Therefore, but how do we bring it out? You have to blow on it strongly. Then it will flame up and spread out in the uh, in the coal totally. In a revealed way. In the godly soul, Shabbat, in a person. That you have to raise up the spark of love which is inside of it, this fiery love in the heart. She can let that it should be revealed in a revealed way. You have to blow on it. What do you what do you, what do you, what do you have to do to blow on it? Who calls Seder to feel? That's how the prayers, the Jewish prayers were designed by the people of the great assembly. <clears throat> All of the prayers that we say in the morning, the Psalms of King David and the blessings before Shema, that though we say Shema Yisrael, a Jewish person is supposed to say these prayers, not just to say them. You're supposed to think about, first of all, you have to translate them to know what you're talking about. And then you have to think about what each word means and how it's really referring to reality. Jehu, a person, a Jew, thinks about the greatness of God. For instance, how God spoke and is speaking and is creating the whole world. Omer Vose, he speaks and the world exists. This whole world that you think is so important, it is important. Of course, what's the question? But it's nowhere near important as the godly word that's creating it. And the godly word that's creating it is nowhere near as important as the source of this word. And the source of this word is no, nothing compared to the God's thought which creates the word. And the God's thought is nowhere near as, as God himself. We have no idea what, what, what all this is talking about. By us, the, the world is really real. Who would dream that this world is just a creation? It's good. But when we think about it, we start to think, if the world is so valuable and the world is so real, think how real the creator is and he's really creating me. When a person thinks about this, this is what's called contemplation, in prayer. Add the call of Avacha until <coughs> you begin to serve God with all of your heart when you say Shema Yisrael. Serving God with all of your heart, your heart gets excited about what's really valuable. For who I call the Vachinus and Nifuach, excuse me, this is like blowing, it's like the bellows, the thoughts that you have, the contemplation that you do in God. These are the words of King David, the words of the people of the great assembly. This is like the bellows that's blowing <clears throat> and flaming up your soul. The love, at the nitzus, the spark of love, the spark of fire, which is in godly fire, which is in your heart. It should tell you that it should shine in a revealed way. In all of your heart. Now, really, this means not just the love of God, which is naturally there in your godly soul, but also to use this sense that you have of your godly soul and convince your animal soul to do it as well. 
it's almost like and I'm just, I'm making this up myself, so you can take it for what it's worth. If it's worth anything, it's almost like a spectator and a um, and a participator, right? There's some people that say they like music, so they go to a concert. They go to a concert, ooh, and they love it. They have a sense of music. There's other people that have absolutely no sense of music. They get the janitor, right? The janitor, the usher, the usher. They're letting people in. They have no sense of music whatsoever. Somebody comes, right? Other some people sitting in the crowd. Somebody taps them on the shoulder. Shh, shh. What's this one? Sorry. They don't want to be bothered. They're listening to the beauty of the music, the harmony, the other thing is moving into the second movement and the coda and to the cadenza and the this. And the, ooh, they're so interested. The usher, he tap on the shoulder. Yes, can I help you? He's not listening. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't care whatsoever about the music whatsoever. But then that's like, then, but then there's people that they're in the audience, they appreciate it. Ooh, they really appreciate it. They listen to it. It's beautiful. But then there's the performer. Then there's the performer. That's a whole different business. Here we're talking about the godly soul. The godly soul is like, sort of like in the crowd. That's the crowd. These are the people that appreciate. They appreciate. What's the difference between the people that appreciate and the people that one who's actually playing? The one who's playing, he practices. He practices and practices and practices and practices, and he takes lessons and he practices until finally his fingers work okay and his eyes work okay and his his memory works okay. Now these things, the same thing is the the Jewish soul. He, was, he didn't say this. The Jewish soul has an appreciation for God, and we have to how do you say to to to, to fire up this appreciation. But the, that's like the, the 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 crowd. We have appreciation of God, but the idea is is that the people in the crowd. They should become performers themselves. They should become acting. <clears throat> and as the Jew has to activate himself, that he actually brings this love out into not just his godly soul when he's praying, he's thinking, but also in his day-to-day -day life and everything that he does. He has an awareness that God is creating him because God is creating us all the time. So it says, this is the idea of thinking about God. That's what it says, love God with all of your heart. This reveals the spark of fire which is in the heart. That's why it says in all of your heart. It says all of your hearts, the heart of the animal soul also, that you really start to get activated, even your animal soul, in your body, or this, right? So that the, 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 the crowd the, 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 that you appreciate, and you're swooning, and you're this, you appreciate the music, you appreciate whatever, you actually become a player, right? You're looking at the basketball game, or whatever it is, and you, you're one of the crowd, you appreciate it, and you actually go out and you do it. This love, you appreciate God, you have love, but you actually bring out this love even in your animal soul. That's what it means. This reveals the spark of godliness, which is in your soul. That's what it means when God says, I will be made holy among the Jewish people. What does it mean? Inside, not just all the Jewish people, but inside of every Jew. Inside of every Jew, there is this inner spark in the heart in every single Jew, Visham inside of this inner point of the heart, I will be made holy. That you, what does it mean made holy? That you will start to flame like fire. A tremendous love to look at the glory of God. And this is the idea of Mashiach, that eventually the whole world will come to this appreciation. Will start see, seeing that God is Kaddish removed, though God is infinitely, infinitely good, but infinitely, infinitely distant from us, and the same time is infinitely, infinitely close to us because He's creating us. The Ain Aruch, there's no way, to, nothing in the world that compares to Him. So, and if so, He and Nitfas, Chuka, a love, a person will be filled with this desire for God, Ayyadeh's bonus, by means of contemplating, thinking. How God is infinitely far away from my comprehension. He's infinitely more real than I can possibly imagine. Inside the inside of my heart. That's saying, and this is the saying, Kadosh of the first group of angels. Remember, that's how we started the Mimer out. That there's three groups of angels. The first group of angels, the ones that are closest, so to speak, to the essence of God. Those are called the burning angels. They say holy one time. And we can get, we can, uh, we can, I want to, want to call it, the, 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 the imitate. We can imitate this. 
<clears throat> because we also have a feeling of God, just like the angels do. The angels have it naturally. That's in their natural soul. The angels are called animals. The angels, they have it naturally because they've got, there's nothing else for them to get concentrated on. That's all there is though. But by us, by we, we have to fan this up because our godly soul is in the world. But nevertheless, we can fan it up. We can have this love and appreciation for God. What's the opposite of this appreciation for God? What's the opposite of this love of God? What's the opposite of love? Depression. Cruelty. Meaninglessness. Emptiness. That's the opposite. And in the middle, there's a whole gamut of things where people a little bit, they have conscience. You appreciate your conscience can tell you what to do. That's a little bit of a feeling of God. You have some sort of a guiding principle, which okay, ideally that's what the Rebbe wants to say. And the Rebbe is trying to tell us that this is not just a religious thing. You go to someplace in India and you sit on the mountains and you forget about your mother and father and you can all of a sudden get illuminated. We're not talking about removing yourself from the world. We're talking about explaining what the world really is. We're talking about enlivening the world. Everything in the world becomes alive. It's everything is a creation from this creator that we that we love. So we see the whole world is being created by God's love. And that's what the angels realize. That's the first group of angels that they're burning up. Well, but Adam and a person, this is what we call loving God with all of your heart. Hainu, namely, Giloi Penimius Aleib, revealing on the inside of the heart. Bebechin is Giloi Mamish in a revealed way. This is ideally supposed to be the <coughs> purpose of Jewish prayer. Get a Jewish prayer book, translate the words, you get a little bit of an idea. But when King David was saying, my soul is expiring to you. He wasn't joking around. He wasn't just some sort of a poet. You know, that was writing some sort of a, of a, of a you know, of a love song. He really actually was talking about reality. And this is reality of every single person. Every single person being created by God. And God is infinitely, infinitely lovable. And no matter how much we love God, God loves us infinitely more. He's creating us. Okay, this is in, in the heart, so that your heart should be full and with love of God, in a way of what we call expiring of the soul. says, Like King David said, I am desiring and lusting and also expiring my soul expires to you. Etc. Oh, okay, this, this is the footnote of the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Rebbe of Chavah, which is very interesting, but Let's go further. That's the first group of angels. Then there are two more groups of angels. The second group of angels says, Kaddosh, Kaddosh, holy, holy. And the third group of angels says, holy, holy, holy. What's going on? Akakak, afterward, there is another group of angels. And this second group of angels, they say two times holy. Holy, holy. What does that mean? Ki, because Bechin is Kaddosh, the first level of being of holy, that the first angels say, this is what we said before. These angels are burning up from below to above. Shasrafim, that these burning up angels, Rotsin, they want the Kalel Bain so they would just want to be included in the infiniteness of God. Like it says, the Stakla, they look at the glory and the beauty of the Creator, of the Almighty, and they just want to be included. They don't want to have anything to do with where they are, they just want to get closer to their source. The Zui, and this is Bechinus Kat Echad. This is the first <coughs> group. Ah, but there's another group of angels, which is a little bit lower. That's in the next world. That's in the world what we call, uh, let's say, Yitzira. We'll see. The second group, they say, Palm Bay. This is the second group. They say two times holy. Who is Shechef Etzim, Leot Kamkein. They want also not just to be go up to God, but they want God the revelation to come down from above to below. These, we talked, the first angels we talked about, the burning up angels, all they wanted to do was just be, how do you say, included in the infiniteness of God. They just want to be totally negated in the oneness of God. That's all they want. But the second group of angels... They want they want godliness to be revealed here in the world. That's what they want. 
And here we have a long thing. Let, let's just a little bit of this will do. Ain Mashkatu, look what it says in Divya Masra Shkorani is the difference between what's called the angels of the Surafim. They say one time's holy, and then there's angels called the Ophanim. The Ophanim, those are what's uh, I translated the wheels. They say Boruch. There's different opinions about exactly what angels are the highest and which are the lowest. The Rambam is the highest, of course, they're one level. Anyway, take it for granted, there's three. The Od Yesh Lair, and also, like it says, Az Yeshem Moshe, when the Jewish people saying to God, that's the idea of Bracha, Boruch Ata, Min Olam Adol. This is like the second group of angels. They want God to be drawn down into the world, namely from the concealed world, so we've called him <clears throat> that it should be where up there there's total surrender to God, that it should be revealed also by Alma Dizgali in the revealed world. Like we say in the days of the Mashiach, Baro called Basar, all flesh will see godliness. All flesh will see godliness. That's what it was in the Holy Temple. The Holy Temple was godliness revealed in the world. But in order to do that, you've got to do something. You can't just surrender yourself to God. You want God to be revealed in this physical in this physical world to show how wonderful and amazing every detail of the world is and why God is creating this world. Well, there you have to have <coughs> Torah and commandments. We'll see. And that's also the angels would say two times holy. They want to draw godliness down from above to below. But the first group of angels, this is like it says, <coughs> well, that's the service of the of the Levites, they just want to go from below to above and be included in the oneness of God. And that's a sh they shouldn't be any revelation whatsoever. That's like none of an view. Remember, we just learned this is not exactly the point of the Torah, but the excitement certainly is. We have to get excited about God, but you can get overexcited. A person says, All I, I just want God to be here, I don't want to be anything. And that's what it says when God turned the sea into dry land, namely the sea, that's all the concealed worlds, the Beruim, Alma, the Iskalia, Ad Alma, the Iskalia, Mamash. <clears throat> there shouldn't be any concealment whatsoever, etc. Okay, that means going from Bria, the world of Bria, that's where the angels, these angels are, the burning up angels, into Atzilut. And not to draw anything down into the world, that's etc. That's the first type of angels. So it says, <clears throat> but drawing down God into the world and a person that also has this, this is what's called loving God with all of your soul, right? There's a sentence when the Jewish people, the motto of Judaism is a sentence in, in the Etchanan and it says, where is it? I'll tell you one second. I forget the exact place. I will tell you where the exact place is. It's a sentence in Deuteronomy and the sentence is in Deuteronomy 6, 4. Huh? Chapter 6, sentence 4. Deuteronomy. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Listen, Jews, God is our God, God is one. This means, and then it says, and you should love God with all of your heart. Says the Rebbe, that means going up to God. You don't want to have anything to do with the world. You don't have, want to have anything to do with yourself. You just want to be included in the oneness of God. That's loving God with all of your heart. Then become nafshah with all of your soul. That after a person loves God with all of his heart, which this means that all of his heart, then he wants to go up. Then after is loving God with all of your soul. This is drawing down, not only just going up, of course he wants to go up, he's excited about God, but he wants to draw down from above to below. Namely, what does that mean? That you, like the Holy Temple, you want God to be revealed in the world. To be his kashos chabad, to connect the mind, the awareness, the consciousness, our consciousness, and also the garments of our soul, thought, speech, and action in the chabad, to, that we should be a house, a vessel for insult. That's what Mashiach is going to do. He's going to inspire the whole world, but he's going to fill the world with, it says, the knowledge of God. <clears throat> every detail, we'll see how precious and miraculous every little detail of the world is which it really, it is really, but we'll just see it. 
So this is mainly the Torah. This is the idea of the Torah. Of the Torah. The Torah that draws God into the world and also the commandments. That's also called Navshara. Means all I want is you, God, but I want you to be revealed here. Okay, that's the footnote. Okay, let's continue. Here's also, but call nafshecha, <clears throat> there's another meaning of call nafshecha, means that even if they kill you, even if they, the, whatever it is, the, the, the crusades or something they say, the Inquisition, worship our idol or we'll kill you. So nobody wants to die. And you know, all you have to do is just bow down to this cross or something. No big deal, right? It's a big deal. No, I can't do it. It's idolatry. I'm not going to do it. Even if they're taking your soul, right, to, to die, is willing to die for God. Shu Mesiris Nefesh, namely what? He's willing to give his life in order to draw godliness into the physical world, etc. Okay, next. That's the second group of angels. He wants to, they want to draw godliness down into the world. That's by means of the Torah. The Kodesh Gimel, and the third one is that they draw godliness down by means of the commandments. Let's see. Katacha, the third one. <clears throat> they say Kodesh, Kodesh, Kodesh. They say three times holy. But Bechina this third group of angels, and we have to learn from them to do the same. This is like the third group of angels. This is also in the service of man, and this is serving God, Bakal Meodecha, with all of your being in Shema. That's what it means. Meod means without any limit. This is Ein Sof, which is above any vessels or whatever. This is by means of the commandments. Okay, so we have, now we have, we're, we're, the Rebbe is giving us a whole new, how do you say, uh, angle to look at reality. To look at reality. What we think, what most of the world thinks, I mean, they don't even think, think about it, actually. It's so unimportant to the whole world is the Torah and the commandments. Why is that important? You, you ever see in the news, right, the newspaper, right? The, the, a, a great rabbi just finished learning the whole shas. Over here, they, who cares about the, right? In the news and whatever, CNN or whatever, they show a picture of a whole class of students just finishing learning the Torah. Who cares about the Torah, right? Shmerel Goldfarb put on tefillin today. You're going to put that in the news. What's that in the news? I care about. He declared war on this person, and he then they saw UFOs, and they're attacking the world. That's important stuff, right? That's important stuff. Torah commandments, who cares? Even the Jews don't care. Even the Jews themselves, they don't care about Torah and the commandments. Right? Go into the Knesset in Israel and say, oh, i got to put on my tefillin now. What are you talking about? Go outside, do what you want to, but this is not... This is this is the, the Knesset is a place for real things, right? For real practical zachen, you know, the, the real things. What do you have to put on to fill in for it? What, what is the what these things are worth nothing? What, what is it worth? The Jewish people themselves, even though the Jewish people strangely are always in the news and everybody's always talking about the news, but the commandments, that eh, the Torah, well, what are you talking about? <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is is that that's the most important thing there is in the world. In the world. The whole entire world. How did we learn yesterday in, in Pirkei Avot? The three things the world stands on. Torah, Avodah, Gemilat Chasadim. That's the three things that the world stands on. Shimon Atzadik said. Torah, Avodah, Gemilat Chasadim. Torah and prayer and commandments. So prayer, we said that's like the first group of angels. That's Avodah. That's going from below to above. <clears throat> wanting only to connect to the creator of the universe, right? Suddenly realizing how foolish I was. I thought this world was really real. I put all my energy into being popular or rich or powerful or whatever it is, being funny or successful or whatever. Those things are okay, but that's not, that's not the essence of life. What's the essence of life supposed to be? God, Torah, commandments. That's the essence of life. Who knows about that? The first Rebbe does. And when Mashiach comes, he'll reorganize the priorities of all mankind, and we'll see how important this is, why the angels are burning up and screaming and yelling, holy, holy, holy. We'll see what they're doing. They're not, how do you say, mentally ill, emotionally ill, right? They're screaming or something like a little child screams for his lollipop or something like that. 
right? It's just they don't the, exactly the opposite. We're the ones that are mentally ill. We're the ones that are emotionally ill. We get all excited about imaginary nothing. We get all emotional about foolishness. What it says in the news on the then that's the third group. The Rebbe wants to get us excited and realize how important God is. He's creating us. There's nothing more real than that. This is not just an idea. It's not a science fiction book. We are creations, and God is creating us. Can you feel that? Well, if you do feel it a little bit, then you'll start to understand what the angels are excited about. The first group of angels, they want to burn up to God. The second group of angels, they're also burning up, but they want to bring godliness into the world. So that's by means, that's the Torah. That's They want the Jews to learn the Torah. The second, third group of angels, they're saying three times holy, they want to bring God into the world also, but that's by means of the commandments. Lohi, <clears throat> and therefore, Mavorchim Aleim, therefore, when we, when we, when Jewish people do a commandment, we make a blessing, that God, you sanctified us, made us holy with your commandments. They draw it down by means of the commandments. Kodesh, holiness, even into the physical world, even into physical items, the tefillin, the mezuzah, money you give, etc. The Cain also, by means of the Torah. The Torah also, we make a blessing, what does it mean when we make a blessing? It says that we make a blessing is to draw godliness into the world, to make this world holy, like we said in the Holy Temple, something like it was on Mount Sinai. The Holy Temple had the same revelation as Mount Sinai. The Indian Yuvan, it'll be understood what we say, Boruch Hashem Malachav Kibori Koach. It says that blesses God, his angels, that they are great power, called Savam, all of God's hosts, Mishartov. God's servants, the angels. Ose Ritzono, they do God's will. What does it mean they do God's will? Hainusha Osim Etzlo Yisbarech, they create by God will. She Yirtse Lashpil, namely what? They, so to speak, change God's mind. When the Jewish people do the commandments, this changes God's mind and that God wants to be revealed and create the worlds. And be in the worlds and bless the worlds and enliven the worlds. It all depends on the Jewish people doing the Torah. Who would dream of a thing like that? You have 9 billion people in the world, and their whole life depends on Jewish people doing Torah and the commandments. It could be just even one Jewish person, that's enough. But there has to be at least that one person. And if there's not, and God hasn't, God wants to stay up where he is. What's that? That's, it's like the first group of angels get out of the world. <clears throat> But that's not the purpose of the world. God on his own cannot possibly be drawn into the world. But by us doing Torah and the commandments, he is. Now, you know, of course, you can ask yourself a question. This makes absolutely no sense. I mean, I, we're just creations of God. <clears throat> How can we change God's mind? Like I said, it's like Donald Duck telling Walt Disney what to do. He's creating us all the time. How can we? So the answer is because that's what God decided. When God created the world, when he put man, into the world, God said, okay, up to now I've been doing everything for free. You get the world, I'm creating the birds, the fish, the, the, the stars, the, the heavens, the angels, I'm creating everything. Now I created man. Man was the last thing. And God said, that's it. The free ride is over. Now everything depends on you, Adam. And that's why when Adam ate from the tree, it wrecked the whole world up. You figure, so Adam ate from the tree, big deal. If there's a lot of elephants and there's dinosaurs, who knows, whatever there is. There's other things also. Just because Adam did one wrong thing, it wrecks the whole world up. Right? What about what all the pterodactyls do and all the, the whatever is the the, the, the the huge fish in the sea and it is, <clears throat> what they do? That's not important. He says, no, it's not important. What man does, because man has free will, that actually changes God's will. That's how God set it up. That's how God set the whole thing up. This is by means of that that the Jewish people do the commandments. And the Jewish people feel this. Every Jew feels it deep inside, even though he doesn't know that he feels it. Even though he doesn't know that he's Jewish, his mother didn't know she was Jewish, his grandmother didn't know she was Jewish. <clears throat> God does not really need the worlds at all. Like it says, Ani Hashem lo I'm God. I created the world. I didn't change at all. The world is made of nothing, so it doesn't change God. It says, even though the, the Torah is 2,000 years before the world, 
<clears throat> remember we're doing that before 2000 that this is the level of Chachmah being a we I turn. I turn two pages. One seven. Yeah. Nevertheless, the third list, the Torah is much higher than anything to do with the world, like it says, a lefcha chachma. But when a Jew learns the Torah by means of us learning the Torah and doing the commandments, this, so to speak, draws godliness down. So we've called the level of God's kodesh. It makes it revealed in the world, as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. Now let's learn the Devar Malchut.